Uh, Dr. Joe DeSoto, he is a candidate for the House of Delegates in the 91st Republican. That seat currently held by Don Forst. Uh, Dr. Joe, good morning to you, sir. Great to have you with us. I'm honored to be here, and thank you for bringing me on. The pleasure is ours. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I, I, well, before you go, I just want to say there's a connection here between you and Mr. Stubblefield that goes back about 20 years. Well, it's larger than that. There's about 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a group of us: um, Craig Blair, John Overington, uh, Walter Duke, Ken Jerry Mays, and Dewey Largent. And later we were joined by Bill and uh, Eric Householder and Larry Kump to turn the state red. Mm-hmm. And we uh, we had this thought we'd start from the Eastern Panhandle, <laughs> and we succeeded. Um, and so everyone but me out of that group ran for political office. Mm-hmm. I decided to continue because I, with my career, because I had a doctorate in medicine, a second in pharmacogenetics, and a third in national security. And so I continue to write. So I always wrote for the last 25 years, locally and nationally on pro-life, education, anti-woke, pro-gun, low low taxes, and um, protecting the elderly. And um, I've spent my career doing that. in the mean, and so in the meantime, I became editor of the Journal of Active Pediatrics, the Journal of uh, Biochemistry Research, the Journal of uh, Virology, and the Journal of Internal Medicine Letters, and published 300 papers. I received the Cancer Researcher of the Year Award from ASCO for helping develop four cancer drugs, and then later the Distinguished International Scientist Award for my work on COVID. I published the first paper on the pathophysiology of COVID, the treatment of COVID, and why it affects different ethnic groups differently, which has to do with the ACE2 receptor. And so uh, that's where I began, um, but a little bit earlier. Yeah, I was going and, to come back, yes. Yeah, so. and, and let me just say this, Joe, before we go any further, for the first time I can say this, John, you are the second most successful author in the room right now. <laughs> Every, everyone is, is, everyone in here is special. Yeah. Every human is special. Everyone adds something to the table. My career started actually a little bit earlier uh, when I was in the uh, combat medic in the Army. I came out. Um, I didn't have enough money to go to college, even though I was working. So I'd been in the Army, so I said, I'll just be homeless. And for the first two years, I was homeless. And um, people helped me. The government was nowhere to be seen. And they asked me to pay for it. And that's why I spent time overseas. That's why I uh, spent time at the Navajo Reservation. And that's why I'm here now. Your resume reads like about four lifetimes worth of work. It's an amazing resume. You just related it in about three minutes. Uh, just uh-huh. maybe that's about fifty percent of what's on your resume. You've also done some international work. I'm not sure how much that you can go into or not, but elaborate if you want to. I've uh, I've been to um, in addition to Saudi Arabia, I've been to Qatar, Egypt, Ukraine, China, Turkey, Malaysia. For what Indonesia. for what reasons, Joe? Most of the time, it was from presenting my medical research. Other times, it was operations for this country. We leave it at that, I guess. Leave it at that, yeah. I understand. And so, um, I um, remember Bill. Yes. He first came and ran for county commission, and um, a lot of good people. Let me interrupt. Let me interrupt just a second. Uh, Dr. Joe was, I think, instrumental with my success running as he was with several others as well i think probably walter duke uh yeah. and jerry mays and and craig Blair because and, he and, was very active in the republican club mm-hmm. and was i think instrumental in working with several of us and each one of them has been a blessing mm-hmm. to this uh area yeah. and um, as you have well, thank you. i've followed you for years also now and I didn't even know because you're an operative, so I wouldn't even know you're. Uh, no, I'm not that important. The um, th- I decided to run um, recently um, based on the fact uh, 
of my past of helping others. I've in my I'm in District 91, and I've given about 300 people free health care. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a few things. Um, I'm at the time in my life where I think I can take a more direct role if if, if I'm allowed to. I um, look, became concerned with um, the money that we gave to uh, Form Energy. Um, I, I feel that's crony capitalism. Mm-hmm. We just passed a bill on uh, against transgenderism, but the bill allows for an exception for gender dysphoria. Well, that's the whole point. People will do a sex change operation, and I think it's an abomination and mutilation to do that for a child under the age of 13. Mm-hmm. Other issues, I want to maintain my pro-life, pro-gun. I've been a 40-year member, benefactor, life member of the National Rifle Association. And um, we have a fentanyl problem. However, I take a different view on it. I think it's the breakdown of the family. Mm-hmm. And so I would like to see a return to no fault, I mean, at fault divorce. I believe paternity fraud should be a felony. And we should take a European approach where the aggrieved spouse is paid a, what they call an alimony of 50000 to $200,000 to, in cases of adultery. We have the strength of the family, not make it abnormal to be married and to do the right thing. Um, you said paternity fraud. Yes. Joe, I, I don't know that term. Tell me what that means. That's, that's if, say, you're married or you get engaged and you're led to believe that that child is yours, mm-hmm. and then 20 years later you find out it isn't. That's the most horrific crime you can commit against someone. And by making it a felony, I'm not just talking about the woman. I'm actually also talking about the, the male who is part of it because we have to be even and balanced. And I, and I think it's... Is this a big issue? I don't think it's... I think it is a big issue because 10% of... Uh, as a physician, I know that 10% of births are out of paternity fraud. Really? Yes. And those are the statistics. It, um, is that different than out of wedlock? Yes. This is when the male was led to believe that's his child. 10%? I have no idea it's what 10%. that's called. Those, those are the statistics. The peer-reviewed statistics. Mm-hmm. And um, it isn't a big issue, but I'm going to make it an issue. Mm -hmm. I also, um, in education, is a disaster. We're 49th or 50th, and right now they want you to have a master's in education. It's ridiculous. You can, in the university, if you have a master's or a PhD in anything, you can teach. What the master's of education does, it limits the pool. And a master's of education doesn't do one of three things which are needed to teach. Content expert, care about the students, and have good communication skills. So we've got to get rid of that. And then it's basically a woke degree. And also... What, what does that mean, Joe? When, if you look at... I was a dean at a university, so that was on programs were under my purview. And so when you have a master's of education, say I want to teach high school science, I only take one graduate class in science. The rest will be on verbiage uh, uh, and uh, equity diversity. And a lot of it is reverse racism. You know, I'm Jewish, but I don't care if you're African American. I don't care if you're Caucasian. Racism can go in both directions. And right now, I see it going um, towards Caucasians. Mm -hmm. And um, it's wrong in either direction. Are you talking about it in the academic world? Academic specifically. And then the teachers bring that into the classroom that all white males are bigots. And we can't have that, and I've seen it. Um, Additionally, um, (coughs) extradition. I, I believe that because we have political um, persecution happening now, Republicans, I believe that we should stop, we should not extradite for political offenses in other states, and including infractions. And then one uh, pet peeve of mine is uh, there's a lot of elderly losing their houses. And part of it is they can't pay taxes. And so I think for the elderly have a $5,000 
unless they owe more than five thousand dollars to back taxes to local or state government protect their house i said this was going to happen when i came up against out against the school bonds which haven't helped and i predicted 400 people would lose their houses i was wrong 800 have and it may not be a lot of money to us in this room but if you're an elderly person making $1,200, you can't afford that extra $50. It may put you in the street in the dead. I not want to protect the elderly. Um, now my view, um, because of my background, I, uh, for me to run for delegate, it's gonna cost me $100,000 a year. I'm not running for fame, I'm not running for money, obviously. It's gonna cost you $100,000 a year in lost revenue? Yes. Okay. And I had to resign uh, from my federal job to do this. What was your federal job, Jim? I was working for one of the intelligence agencies. Okay. Um, it couldn't because of the Hatch Act. Now, I believe a delegate should listen, represent, and serve the Hardy Amendment. I believe that the Hardy Amendment according with my religious belief was consistent however most of in my district and the 91st are against it i would have to vote against that type of amendment because that's what my district wants even though i i, I believe we have to represent the people not ourselves how, how do you know <laughs> excuse me how do you know what your district wants joe just by um talking to people talking to people and my views may be different if, as I talk to more and more people going door to door. But I've started that process, and that's one of the things I'm hearing. Um, but I'm always open to listening to change. It's not about me. The second thing is to do what I'm going to say I'm going to do. And I, I'll do that. The, and then to serve. You know, when I was homeless, I had more nightmares about that than when I was in combat. And the government wasn't around to help. And so why do I bring this up? When things go rough, there's no one around to help. And, but there is one person who can, that's a delegate. Most of my constituents can't afford $10,000 to hire an attorney. If the delegate is active, he can make a phone call to a local or state agency and that is usually more meaningful than an attorney. My phone number is public, 304-279-4234. If I can help you, give me a call. I've been doing it for 25 years. Before we run out of time, I want to get to some questions. Bill? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, a lot of what you say kind of re reminds me of Big Brother watching. Uh, you were saying that, uh, talking about the uh, paternal fraud. You're talking about uh, uh and I'm going a blank right now. But anyway, I have the sense that you want to get the government more involved at a lower love, level of our daily life than I would have anticipated you to say. That's just for marriage. Because I think the government has allowed allowed evil to thrive. Yeah. Let me give you an example. So there was an individual I talked to over at Gabe's. His wife... Uh, he was married, and he brought his wife into the home that he grew up in. His wife had an affair. The judge ordered him out of his, his out of his house, ordered him to pay child support, and the wife moved into that house with her lover. There's no way that that's fair on any level, and religiously. Adultery is a crime as bad as murder, according to my religious beliefs. And I, I think that for a person to raise a kid for 20 years, not know that it's his, to spend all these resources, something ought to be done with it. Now, I'm more libertarian in other areas. Remember in the past, I, was, I advocated against the government coming in with smoking in bars and stuff like that. I advocate, I, I don't like the idea of, the, of drones being set over your property. So I'm a libertarian in some other areas, conservative in some, I'm more eclectic because I like to think things through. 
And if you can give me an argument of why I might be wrong, I'll listen because I might be wrong. Because yeah. I don't know everything and I never will. But as a community, as a group, we can come usually to a better answer. And when I talk to my community, if they have a good rationale, they can change how I think. Yeah. A question that's frequently asked is you're, you're running to, ups, uh, uh, to remove an incumbent. Uh, why are you running against the, uh, in the 91st? Do you think the incumbent's not doing a good job? He's, uh, he's on the front a nice person. However, uh, according to West Virginia Voters Guide, he has the most liberal voting record out of the entire House of Delegates, except for one Democrat. He voted for the amendment to allow sex change operations for those with gender dysphoria. He promised to give the money back to us when we had an $800 billion, $800 million surplus the week before he voted to give it to Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. He also... Um, You're talking about form energy now. Form energy. And, and then he voted on term limits when he first ran and he swore he'd only run twice. Well, he never introduced a term limit and he's here running a third time. And so we have to hold people accountable for what they say. I am in the most conservative district in this county, if not the state, and he's the most liberal delegate, with the exception of one Democrat. He votes to the left of the Democrats. But uh, Form Energy, uh, you could fault several of the delegates uh, I, I put in this the, area for that. I put the blame on the governor for misleading the delegates. I don't blame the delegates because I believe they were misled, having talked to several of them. And I put this on the governor. He's the one that led the effort. I Overall, I think the delegates have done a good job. John Gilstrap. Getting back to education, if what legislation would you draft, or were the elements of legislation would you, you draft to save the education system as There's it is? two. I got involved over in Jefferson County, and I asked the school board to resign because they were interfer interfering with the, with the teachers who know the students the best. They wanted exams to only count as 5% of the grade, the school board, 5%. That means there were graduating people that didn't know anything. What was the other 95? Showing up the class. It was ridiculous. When I was in high school, it was 50% or more to hold the students accountable for actually learning and knowing this material. I would propose that examinations in most courses should be at least 50% of the grade and support the teachers on the ground, not the bureaucrats who just want to see a high pass rate, meaning pass everyone. Second, Bill, you did some wonders over at uh, the Ocean Oceanographic Noah, 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 and that, Noah. Yeah, yeah. You you couldn't teach at the high school because you don't have that master's of education degree. Neither one of you could teach about the radio because you don't have that master's of education. I have three doctorates. I couldn't teach introductory biology. It's absurd. And I want people in the university. Each one of you could teach based on lifetime skills. Why can't you teach at a high school or junior high? Is that high? the union? I can't answer. I think it's the law. It's, it's the, the law. It's, it's the, the law. law. Statue, okay. yeah. And so I want to be able to bring a law enforcement officer with 20 years experience. He'll do a much better job in teaching criminology than a PhD in criminology. And then, you know, I think it would expand the pool. So now there's more people that can teach. And that's another area. So those are the two areas in education. It's not about more buildings. It's about getting good, qualified people, care about the students, good communication, and being a content expert. You're not a content expert with a master's degree in education, teaching physics. You are if you have a master's in physics, or if you were a technician who worked in physics for 20 years. And so those are some of the changes. And, um, you know, um, we next generation starts with the children and the family is is the breakup of the family so as 
that Bill pointed out, and he's right. I, I do believe that the government needs to to buff up the family, but in other areas, I'm more libertarian. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned you did not vote for the school bond. Thirty well, seconds, Bill. What was the reason for not voting for the school bond? Thirty because, seconds, Joe. Um, I, I felt that we were. Our, I felt that it wasn't going to help the students because it was for buildings. And but do you not put students in buildings? You need to build schools. Yeah, but we already have buildings. But you need more schools because we have growth. Yeah, but um, we could do it in other ways. Um, there's, you can put buildings like this that are trailers. A lot of colleges do that. We have several of those in Berkeley County already. Yeah, I know. They're unpopular. But my view is we put a lot of elderly in the streets over it. And I, I think that's where are they going to go? The homeless shelter? Joe, we're, we are out of time. Uh, when we come back, final 50 seconds, you can tell people they can find out more about your campaign. Dr. Joe DeSoto in the 91st. We're back with more after this. Thanks to all of our guests on the program, including Dr. Joe DeSoto, who is running as a Republican in the 91st primary against Don Forst. How do we find out more about your campaign, Dr. Joe? Ten seconds. Uh, call me, 304-279-4234. If you're in, the, if you're in my district, you've called me probably before for health care. I will answer, and I'd like to hear what your opinions and your issues are. If I can help you with local and state government, I will. And if I can't, I'll find someone that can. Dr. Joe, thanks for coming in. Good thanks, luck Joe. Hey, uh, 